In this video, we're going to look at the pronunciation of fractions. Now, expressing fractions in the English language is extremely challenging. And the reason for this is that there are a set of rules that we follow to do it, but quite often we have to break these rules. And I'm going to go into more detail later on. Basically, I've, I've outlined two rules below which work for most fractions. The first dot point says, the numerator is pronounced first. So we'll underline that. We pronounce the numerator first, and we simply do it by stating the number. Okay. The second dot point says that the denominator is pronounced second, but it is pronounced differently. Usually we add a th, and this is where things get complicated, because it's not always going to be like this. All right, anyway, I'm going to show you some basic fractions that follow these two rules, and then I'm going to show you situations where we have to break these rules. We'll start with something such as, um, let's go 1 over 6. How would I pronounce this? Well, the first dot point says to pronounce the numerator first, which in this case is the number 1, and it says to just do it by stating the number. So we're just going to uh, write that down. So we're just going to say 1. We're just going to state the numerator. That's the first step, and that's what we always do for fractions. All right. The next one says to state the denominator second. So in this case, our denominator is 6. And it says to pronounce it differently, it says to add a th. So instead of writing just 6, we write th at the end of it. So in this case, we say 1 6, all right, with a, like a th sound. So we'll do another one. Let's um, change it a little bit. Let's put 2 over 7 this time. And like before, we pronounce the numerator just the way the number sounds. It's the number 2, so that goes first, 2. And we put a hyphen after it, and then 7 comes next, and when we pronounce it, we go 7 with a th at the end of it. Now here's where things get maybe just a tiny bit more complicated. We actually need to put an s at the end of this. s means it's a plural, because any time there's more than one of something, we have to add an s at the end of it. We have two sevenths. If it was one seventh, we wouldn't put the s at the end, but because it's two, we say two sevenths. Okay, so so far nothing too bad. Um, let's go another one. Let's say three over eight. So we start with the numerator, which we pronounce as just three, and then we say eight with a th at the end of it. E i g h t, and it's going to look a bit weird to write th at the end of h, and so this is another scenario where things change a little bit. Rather than putting th at the end of it, they just put a single h, because it's already got a t at the end. So we say 3 eighth, and, and we need to put an s again, because we have three of them. It's, it's a plural, it's more than one. Okay, so it changed a little bit here. Like, it's not too bad though. Alright, here's another one. Let's go with one over 5, and let's follow this rule. So once again, we start with the number 1, put a hyphen, and if you think of the number 5 uh, with a th at the end of it, you would think it would be pronounced 1 fifth. Now, it just kind of sounds a bit odd, so they changed that. They said, no, nah, we don't want to call it 1 fifth. We'll still put the th at the end of it, but we want to call it 1 fifth. And so they ended up changing the spelling. So once again, getting a little bit confusing, but not the end of the world. All right, now let's do 3 over 9. So when we pronounce this, we start with our numerator, which is 3. Notice the numerator is not the issue here. It's always the denominator. And you would think, OK, it's a 9 below, so I write 9 with a th at the end of it. And of course, an s, because it's a plural. There's three of them, 3 ninths. Um, now, it's pronounced 3 ninths, but the spelling actually changes a little bit. They decided to drop the E and spell it like so. So I'm going to scribble this one out. It's three ninths without the E. 
So some of you might have been watching this and going, okay, we, we broke the rule a couple of times, but it wasn't that bad. But we're going to really break the rules now. We're going to look at some really different ones. Let's start with 1 over 2. Now you would think that we would start with 1, and it's the number 2, and then we would put TH at the end of it. Now, this just sounds really weird. One tooth, okay? It sounds like the thing in your mouth a tooth or teeth. So they didn't like that and they said okay we're not going to have one tooth and we're going to rename it as one half. Okay so really really changed that one didn't they. Um, here's another one that can really throw people one over three. Oh sorry let's change that let's make it two over three. I don't want our numerator of one all the time. Two over three. So we know the numerator is two that's fine. Now, if we did 3 with a th at the end of it, and you need an s as well, it's a plural, 2 threeths is it's quite a challenging word to, to pronounce. You don't really like those th sounds over and over. So they changed that completely to 2 thirds. There's another one that's really changed. Um, let's go with something such as 3 over 4 you would think that that would be 3 and the number 4 with a th at the end of it, or 3 fourths. And to be perfectly honest, to say 3 fourths is not too terrible. People would actually accept a solution like this, but it's not the way we normally say a fraction like this. We have a special word for a denominator of 4. We actually say 3 quarters. Okay, now I've actually got a table that um, lists some denominators and the pronunciation for them for you to look at. In fact, there's even a few more um, when we've got a denominator of 31, we say 31st. Have a read through it and have a look at all the, all the different pronunciations. Anyway, that concludes our video discussing the pronunciation of fractions. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.